asking you shall receive the highest comments were for Alloin Master of Poison. So here is the full hero guide, talents, skills, pairings and artifacts. Everything you're going to need to know, so stay tuned for the full guide. Hello everyone, so yes, we're going over Halloween today, a lot of you have been asking loads of questions in the comments in multiple videos, so do you know what, let's just address all those questions in a nice video all about the amazing mage himself, is he worth investing into his pairings as well as what does he actually do as the mage, so let's go over everything you're going to need to know in this video, so smash the like, comment and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons content with me Mr Sneaky here, and with all that intro said, let's Let's get into the cool thing about Alloin, right? So Alloin is um, a really versatile hero. The reason why is he has the exact same three trees as someone like Valen. So if you look, the trees are the exact same on these two tr um, heroes. So it allows you to actually experiment on Alloin a lot and learn how to maybe manipulate a load of damage and then test it later on when you do get a stronger Valen, right? So Alloin's actually a really good hero. Um, he's a really good hero to be paired with a few others. That obviously, we're going to cover in the video. But let's go over his skills and let's break things down nice and simple for everyone. So, his very first skill is a 1000 rage cost. Very far attack range, like every mage unit in the game. So, he deals 600 damage to the unit and he ensnares them. And while he, you are ensnared, you've got reduced march speed for 10 um, by... Let's say that again, 10% march speed reduced for 3 seconds, right? And he deals an extra 100 damage factor every second during that. So that's an extra 300 damage in total. So this one skill deals 900 to the target and it slows them for 10%. Really cool effect. And then when we go into his passives, this which actually makes Alloin a really good hero to be paired with a load of different heroes. His first one gives them a big amount of stats, so he gets 10% attack and 10% um, unit HP. Really beneficial for those other heroes like Wilder, Atheist, Lilia, Valen, you name it. He's actually really good to be paired with a load of them, and we'll go into detail those parents later again. We've got normal attack damage taken reduction. This is actually really powerful taking less normal attacks from those archer units and having a flat 15% against them is actually going to give you a big, big edge in the open field. And again, when you're trying to go in the open field and survive the longest, and if you are getting targeted by archer players, this actual passive here is a very powerful skill to put onto a unit and allow them to obviously be a lot more tankier when you're in the open field combat. His last skill is he has a possibility chance, again 15% chance um, when he's getting attacked to chance, uh, well should I say 15% chance to ensnare that attacker and when he does he gives them again same as his first skill a 10% march speed reduction and a 100 skill damage factor every second for three seconds right so this is exactly the same skill as on the back end of this right so this continuous damage factor area right now on the skill one is exactly the same thing on skill two so you can get a bunch of damage out and it's all damage over time which is very powerful when you're trying to stagger damage out but when you finally 5-5-5 five, five, five your hero, like you can see on screen, you do get to awaken him. And when you awaken him, it actually enhances that skill one even further, right? So instead of what it used to do, we gain that same damage factor. But if the target is already suffering from any other effect that deals magic damage to him, so for example, our skill four, it will also deal an additional hero skill damage factor of 200. So now this is almost 1100 damage to the target. So it's a massive amount of nuke. So it's actually really underrated how much single target DPS you deal to a match. But it's always staggered. Similar to almost like a Guan Win, right? Because if you look at Guan Win's skills right now, she deals a 200, 200 and 400, right? So it's staggered damage. 
and Alwyn does something very similar with his poisonous or nature effects in the game, right? So that's his skills. I hope I brought them down. Nice, a bit of kit, all about of damage and PvP. As you can see, all the tanky stats you're going to need for any magic march. So let's do a nice little snap with the boy and let's go into some of the pairings that you're going to want to put with Alwyn. And we're going to discuss primary and secondary roles as well for him. So when you come to the pairings now, pairings are pretty easy when it comes to Alwyn because like I said, he does offer any magic unit a load of tankiness, but there is some heroes that you can actually abuse this really well with. So one obvious example is Waldir. And the thing is you can choose, and, and this is one thing you guys in the comment sections need to understand in this game. If you put Waldir as the primer, you're gonna be using his skill tree, which we've covered in the Waldir guide. So go and check that out. But if you're gonna have in, you know, Alwyn as your primer, we're gonna be rocking these talents, right? But the beautiful thing with the match, no matter what you run, is the fact that with Wilder, you get the same amount of stats that you want. You also get a 15% hero skill damage bonus, meaning that Alwyn is going to be hitting even harder. And it gives him more survivability with that 600 shield. And to round things up, as everyone knows, he is one of the kings of AoE. And he freezes them, which is a magic effect, which means, again... Alwyn has a lot of synergy with Waldir here. So if you look at even an upgrade version of that, you could still pair him up with someone like Valen. You could even try and pair him up with someone like Lilia. If you want to make Lilia, maybe. If you want to put hide, you know, if you want to hide your Lilia in the secondary slot, maybe she's only a 5-1-1-1 Lilia. But you've got that awakened 5-5-5-5 five, 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 uh, five Alwyn. You can put him in the primary slot and use some of the future talent trees that's going to be in the video, right? And allow your Lilia to pump out as much damage as you can with all the rage generation as well as the effects that we can go and uncover with that, right? So I hope that does discover some of the pairings that you can have. You can obviously pair him with someone like Atheist too. Even Fear is a really good supportive match if you really wanted to do it that way as well, having her primary or secondary as well. But Alwyn here, and this is what I'm going to give you guys as the final pairing tips when you're looking at pairings with him, he is excellent as a deputy commander. He's also really good as a primary commander too. So it's down to what you want your march to do. So when we talk about that, again, we're talking about a role, right? So if we consider Wild Deer to be our skill burst, all about that big nuke damage role, we could consider our Alloin to be more of a defensive, maybe supportive slash tank mage that you can put instead in the front and you're going to have access to a different bunch of talents that are actually going to be better more beneficial for you and you can take advantage of too so that is what i would suggest just remember you can have him in the primary or secondary slot he is absolutely excellent in both a really good investment to be honest in the game for free to play players as well if you're looking for someone to pair if you started as league of order so if you start as league of order you could you know as you can leveling up your wild data through the quest line you could either be investing your sculptures into atheist if you've been lucky with your you know gold keys or if you've been even luckier and you've had more gold keys for your Alloin, you could even be investing those universal epic sculptures into him, right? So this is what it's all about, especially when you're free to play. Remember, you've got to be flexible. You've got to work with what you have, right? And if you don't know what we're talking about, watch the Road to Glory series. I've been covering it throughout that series and we've been working what we've got and we've been pushing through all the way. So... That's all the pairings, everything you need to know as well. Buy a Halloween in the primary and secondary slot. I hope I answered it all for you guys. I know it's a little bit more in depth and detail, but that is everything we're going to need in the nitty gritty part. Let's go into the artifacts. The thing is with the artifacts, it's pretty much the same with most mage marchers. I'm not going to lie to you. We can be rocking the Phoenix Eye if you have it. If you really want it to be a bit more supportive, the tier of Arbon is fine as well. You could also run Magic Bomb. This is a really powerful artifact to run them as well. 
If you don't have access to these and maybe you only have access to something like Staff of Spring, this is okay for like raids because you're obviously going to be able to spot heal and heal up your, you know, tank and make sure he survives through. It's really good. But as well, if you are raiding and you're trying to look for something, this is obviously the premiere for me, S++ raid choice for any mage march it does a ton of damage no cooldown on the rage cost so as soon as that one minute 30 cooldown is done you're good to go you also if you've really not got it you can go on the ever ice ever ice is okay but i would try and move on to the epics as soon as possible honorable mentions again breath of Yagantis, very very powerful artifact for mages to put on big debuff on them as well as a bit of extra damage so you can push through the front line of the enemy and then final one infernal flame as well if you put this on your alloween and say you ran an alloween primary with the infernal flame and say someone like valen behind you could run say even or say waldia behind you could run a lilia valen combo as a secondary match and because you have two marches now that have Scorch because of the Lilia and now the Infernal Flame passive on the Alloween, hopefully the probability on that skill 4 on Lilia will trigger for those guys who do have access to her, right? So it's a really powerful synergy combo for those guys that understand maybe a little more a bit of in-depth advanced knowledge there for you guys that do like it. So that is all the artifacts that we're going to need to know. So let's go into the talents. Nice and simple things. We're going to go into quickly a sh quick, quick showcase here. We've got the control PVP magic tree and we've got backstab. All right. And when we look into our Valen, Valen has the exact same tree. So we're going to be using our Valen tree as our source. I'm just showcasing what you're going to be using because obviously you can see I've invested way more levels into him so we've got access to the full talent tree compared to the alloween so i want to be able to give you guys the correct tree without you know making it a bit you know nuanced right so with all that said let's go into the talents and discuss all the talent trees that is magic pvp and control what are the best ones what you should be doing and what you should be focusing on so here we are at the talent trees for Alloween. Again, remember we're just using the Valen as a base plate for you guys to follow. But they have the exact same trees as well as the same foundational stone. So when we go into the foundation talents, it's always the Holy Trinity. Remember these no matter what you are doing. It is the best free for PvP, PvE content in the game. It's always giving you the attack, mark, speed and the health for your units. You're going to need all of this in order to get away as well as chase down targets in the open field. The first tree we're going to go over is the control tree. The reason why is this is the best tree in the game that triggers backstabber. And the reason is when we read backstabber is, is whenever we inflict a debuff effect on the enemy legion, we also deal 2% more damage overall that is to, um, on that target for five seconds this can be triggered every five seconds guys so it's important for us to keep this up as often as possible because the more time this is up the quicker we're going to be able to kill them and get them out of the open field right so we have to remember about inflicting debuffs so this tree is the best tree at doing it so when you're running alloween i would honestly recommend running the control tree for him as your primary tree and then what you would do is go down the magic tree after and we will obviously showcase the magic tree afterwards and we'll explain why and this would be the best tree in my opinion but we will go down all three trees for you guys in case you want to experiment and try the pvp tree or try a max out magic tree right the beauty of the game is you can focus and try different talents because every season it resets guys you know your level resets you're not punished for experimenting and having fun so have fun try one talent page out next season try a different talent page out right so this is the talent page we're going to go over what we're going to say first is we're going to zoom in 
right as close as we can and just try and cut into the main area. So we've got backstabber covered, we know what it does, we're going into the control tree. So with the control tree here, what we're going to do is quite simple, we put 5 points into overall speed, we have to take that, allowing us again to get away really easily now, as well as chase down targets. Very powerful with Alloin, because remember, Alloin does ensnare you with that skill 1 and skill 4, and he has a really high probability chance it's going to keep triggering, which is a debuff effect, which is triggering that backstabber, right? So what we can do is two things here, guys, and this is going to again up to you, I'm going to give it all in your hands as the player and choose what you want if you are a bit more of an aggressive player and you want to try and get a bit more kills you can go overall attack this is what i've gone for i've tried to increase the overall attack of the legion by two percent meaning i get a bit more punch in all of my hits which is good but we do know mages do get targeted too which you can also go for then is last word if you do feel like you get targeted way too much and you really want to go all in in more of the counter attack you know tanky build so you can make your mages stay out as long as possible while dealing as much damage as you can counter attack damage is very powerful so i wouldn't underestimate it you could try it out but for me i do prefer the overall attack so that's my opinion go for the five out of five attack and then what we go for is high spirits every time we launch a normal attack we gain 50 range with a 10 percent chance so this means hopefully one in ten you know autos this can get refreshed and we could get super lucky and get a bunch of rage really fast and gave us that you know trigger on skill one as fast as possible but the bread and butter of this build is the next keystone. So this is what you're going to unlock when you get to around, I think it's about level 27, I want to say, in the build. Um, when you get to 27, you get Soul Siphon. When you hit Soul Siphon, counter attacks now have a 10% chance to steal 40 rage from the enemy legion. So this is why you can go down that last word because you're going to be dealing counter attack damage and dealing more is obviously beneficial and it synergizes really well with soul siphon so you can make those two talents work really well together but again if you're a bit like me and you want to just hit him hard you can go for the the attack right but with soul siphon the beauty of this skill is when you are getting targeted maybe by two three four marches each march of those have a 10 percent chance to you stealing 40 rage which is a debuff which is going to trigger backstabber meaning you deal more damage when you swing back and again when you're running away you will notice your rage bar is generating really fast because of this soul siphon so pay attention to it in the combat you're going to notice it and you're going to feel it in the game but when you've only got one point left, for example, say you've gone down the PvP tree or the magic tree, always put one point in blindside. The reason is we do this is to put again, when you enter battle, you reduce the march speed of a target by 6%, slowing them, which is triggering as backstabber, which is beautiful, right? And this is what you should put always your last point into if you've only got one point left, always put it here first. And then what we're going to do is put four points in, just increase the, a little bit of skill damage. So we've got a 3.2% increase. But what we do is a really cool effect now where we're going to now take, whenever we take skill damage, so again, when we get focused down, we're going to gain rage really fast, which is going to now pump with soul siphon and high spirits. And it's going to generate so much rage for us to skill cycle and hit that skill one continuously with Alloin, right? So now, to finish the build off, we're not going to go for eye for eye. What I prefer is going for Sage. The reason is we have now a 50% chance to gain Synergy every time we inflict a debuff on the enemy Legion, which we do quite often already, and we increase the hero skill damage dealt by 5%. So this is almost increasing backstabber to almost seven percent damage if you want to call it like that you know the amount of damage we're focusing on now and it's this very similar effect with it so we're stacking now the damage on and to round it off and to give us an another reason or and another trigger in order to trigger sage and to trigger backstabber we're gonna take reticent or reticent whatever it, i don't know how to percent <laughs> pronounce it but i'm gonna say reticent right so Reticient says whenever we cast our rage skull we have a 25% chance 
to silence the target, preventing them from casting their rage skill for two seconds. This is a, an insane debuff again, which is going to trigger Sage, which is going to trigger Backstabber on Alloin, which is going to allow your match to deal a bunch of damage in the open field when you're trying to deal as much damage and gain as many merits as you can in PvP. So this is one of the most powerful trees to trigger Backstabber. I hope you understand why now, and this is why we go down the micromanage route and we go down the way we do. So, what I've done down now is we go down the magic tree. So what we're gonna do is switch these trees up. So when we hit preset two, it's a really easy magic tree to follow, and we're gonna follow it all the way through. So we're gonna get five points in magic HP. We're gonna get foresight. So whenever we gain, uh, when we cast our rage skill, we're gonna have a chance to gain 75 rage again to pump out as much of that skill one as we can, which is beautiful. And because we didn't get a five out of five earlier, we make up for it here, right? So now we've got the 4% extra skill damage. So in total, we've got seven point, I believe if we counted it right, and let's go back into that page. So we're not guessing, it's 7.2% skill damage on the Alloin, right? So we got remember this is for the Alloin and this is gonna benefit now all of these numbers on screen as well as the damage factor here as well as when you upgrade and finish up your alloin it's increasing this damage here too so the amount of damage he's going to pump out is going to be absurd with the talent pages right so let's go back into the magic tree and we're going to go through what you're going to finish it out with so now we're going to have Magic Maelstrom. This is the most consistent and what I believe the best thing to have. It is a debuff you again put onto a target, which is going to trigger Backstabber again. Um, which is also, you know, if you've got it already used elsewhere, this is giving you another opportunity to trigger while something might be on cooldown, for example. And when this is on cooldown for 30 seconds, you know, we've got all these other talents over here triggering Backstabber. I hope you can understand now. I know it's a little bit in-depth and in, de in detail of uh, this build, but Alloin and Valen and anyone who has access to the control tree and Backstabber has this beautiful tree um, combination that they can have. A Magic Maelstrom basically puts a 10% defense reduction onto the target. So that is another debuff again and it allows you to hit them even harder because they've got a reduced defense now. With one point with your Alloin, it's up to you what you can go for. You can take less skill damage. You can put the one point into the 1%. You can also put the one point into the shield factor. It's up to you. I'm not going to hate you for whatever you pick here. But if you're going down the full magic tree like we are now, you should always put five points into Egoism so you are tankier as a march, as well as putting a five out of five on Wither, meaning, again, we have a 50% chance to inflict a magic defense, uh, magic defense break on the target, meaning we deal more damage. And again, guys, this is, I hope you can understand now, another debuff on the target triggering backstabber now giving us as much uptime on this talent as we can to abuse it and for me you've got two choices with an alloin and this is the beautiful thing you can with an alloin primary you can always have cry havoc whenever you blow 50 percent you gain that 7.5 percent increase in skill damage and obviously in the open field this is powerful because you're going to be fighting until your march is in the red before you refresh right so you're going to get a bunch of damage out before you need to run home but what you could also do is take something like insult to injury all of your damage is a bunch of continuous damage effects so this is going to increase your damage output by five percent and when you pair someone like lilia behind you you're gonna increase her damage as well by five percent too with all the scorch triggers right so a really powerful keystone here that you could take as an optional talent choice guys for alloin so remember this is the alloin talent tree for magic but we do finish out here with Ecoclasm. You do love that extra damage when we're fully made up of mage units. You do get a bunch of buff effects throughout the build already. And when we do, we get extra hit, um, hero skill damage for um, 10 seconds. So we're going to be pumping out, as you can see, as much damage as possible. But as we said, when you do finish the magic tree, 
we're gonna do go down that control tree guys so just again for you guys if you've gone down the magic tree here we will be finishing the build like this on screen all of these points right here will finish your magic build when you're level 60 okay so now we're going to finish on the last build and this is the pvp tree right now and you can go down to multiple routes i honestly believe when you go into this a very eric um, experimental tree for pvp you can get a load of benefits depending on which way you want to go so one direction you can go showcasing it right now is all the attack obviously you have to take you can gain a bunch of normal attack damage just so you've got a bit of extra white when you're hitting for people from far enough. So if you're trying to kill, for example, infantry, this is going to be beneficial because it's going to let you kill them quicker. But I do like having a little bit extra march speed when you're playing mages. I hope you guys realize when you do play mage, you do f you are a turtle. We are turtles, man. You're slow as hell. So being able to have just extra 2% honestly will benefit you in the game. But what you could also do is even put 5 points into overall defense. If you really want to get super tanky with your Alloin. Or you could even put the 4 points in defense and the 1 point in speed. Again, like I've done, it's up to you how you put your first, you know, 5 points here. It, you can't go wrong honestly these all work really well with him i wouldn't do a three two split either do a five five or a four one you know or one four for example you choose where you're gonna pick it but again we get into the second area so when we're going to the second area in the pvp again all of these are very powerful so in pvp we can increase our health by two percent very powerful when you're in pvp because again the more health you have the more damage you can take the more damage you can take the more you can dish it out or if you're a bit more aggressive you can try and double up on the amount of rage generation through high spirits so you have some rage generation now in the build and because if you've noticed in the top section there really isn't any rage generation for so far if you're going down the pvp tree in the early game i would recommend hitting high spirits and later on so when you're level six there you could reset it and put it into overall health right you could also, if you're really greedy, go Fury of Flame. This is a 5% increase in skill damage. Insane buff again that you could reset and put all 5 points into later on. So now we're in the area where you can go optional with mages. I think personally Army of Valor is more beneficial because you do, you are generally further away from everyone. So because you're further away, you can sustain in combat for longer, meaning you can get, you know, this Army of Valor damage trigger up more for long time, well, for longer, should I say. And because you're up for longer with extra damage, you're going to be killing people. And obviously killing people is what everyone wants to do. But... If you do feel you're getting targeted and you do feel like your march is squisher, honestly, look of the draw is such a powerful um, ability because if you've noticed, when we do finish this tree, again, we will be going down the control tree. So when you have Soul Siphon plus the look of the draw together, trigger or counter attack damage triggers, you're going to be doubling up on effects where you're reducing all the damage and stealing a bunch of rage from the enemy. So look at the draw, very powerful effect. Don't underestimate it. I would highly recommend it. So if you want to go down the same route as me, Legion Capacity is king in, in my opinion. But there again is an argument for synergistic parts in the build. So if you want more counter attack damage, if you've taken it down here, you can so you can get a total of almost nine percent extra counter attack damage on your mage march which is very insane if you think about it for a free stat almost in your talent so always remember this is an optional choice you could pick later on you could experiment with this but for me having more legion cap especially on alloins more beneficial you can have more damage you're gonna be you know killing them quicker you can sustain for longer so everything about legion cap is just a pro it's always a plus there's no negatives for, for having it so when we go up the tree 
we have strength to strength. For me, this is the obvious choice. We could try intercepting, but we don't want to be intercepting. We're mages, so we're all about staying as far as possible. And when we are, we're going to be dealing as much damage as we can. So 1.5% flat damage increase is beautiful. And like the PvP tree, when you're running on someone like Kanara, I do love having a 300 troop healing factor on the build. It just gives you that extra sustain in the fight, especially if you can clear up three or four couple of red marchers in between your kills, you know, to get some free healing off, right, and sustain up without feeding too many merits to the enemy. So it gives you that bit of sustain in the open field for your mage march. And to finish off the build, I do believe Blessing of Fury is the best talent here, gaining that 10% HP bonus when you cast a raid skill. Absolutely beautiful, powerful, powerful ability when you're in the open field. You'll notice how tanky you become when this is on, so don't worry. But like we said, we will be going down the control tree once you've finished the PvP tree. So this is, again, when you hit level 43, you can get this tree complete. And then every point to level 60 should be put in to the control tree as shown here. And when you do get to Soul Siphon, and like I said, you've got one point left, you should always put it in blindside. Again, to give you another chance to trigger Backstabber. So those are, guys, the free trees. I'm going to keep them on screen for you guys to check on. This is, in my opinion, the best tree in the game to trigger Backstabber as well because you have the most amount of opportunities to trigger a debuff on the target to allow you to deal 2% more damage. And this is very powerful on Alloin, remember. The magic tree is very good for an overall build. If you're trying to just go for more damage in um, PvP as well as maybe raids, this is a more better tree for you because you're going to get a, a jack of all trades almost with this tree. So this is where I would recommend the magic tree for you guys if you're looking to be a bit more safe. But... The PvP tree, again, is made for PvP. So if you're trying to make him kitted out and try and kill only, you know, PvP, your enemy alliances that are in the server, then this is the tree you're going to be going for. But remember, whatever tree you go for, if it's PvP or magic, you're going to be going down the control tree as your secondary when you've got your last 17 points. And that will be in your five points going into the overall speed. And then your five points either in last word or overall attack, depending on how you want to play the game. And then you always put your five points in high spirits, grab soul siphon and blind side, right? So that is all the talents you're going to need <clears throat> for the boy Alloin, the master of poisons, the nature guy in the game. First epic that was honestly used heavily for free to players and he's honestly a very great investment for you guys in the long term when you play the game so far especially when there's a lack of magic heroes so you've got to use what you've got to use right so I definitely would recommend Halloween. I hope you guys enjoyed the whole guide for the master of poisons smash a like comment and subscribe to the channel if you found something informational or you've learned something today about the talent trees or Halloween himself but that is all you're going to need. If you're going to need a hero guide, again, smash a comment below. And if you guys, thump, you know, the guy with the most thumbs up on a comment. So if you guys say, I don't know, Hosk. And then as all the people thumbs up the Hosk comment, I will focus on that hero next, ga guys. So put in, you know, comments below. But smash a like and subscribe to the channel for more daily, uh, daily videos for Call of Dragons. I am an official Call of Dragons content creator. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out.